Chapter 22, Blake. Winter break. You gotta look, remember it's Blake, so we gotta look for the cartoons. Maybe one day I'll be able to draw as well as Blake. Sharon, Christmas dinner stuck in my throat, like the ham had turned to glue. Mom set down her fork and tried to reassure me, like words could somehow fix this, like she could somehow smooth my worries away with, you've learned your lesson, the worst is over, and at least you're all safe. You're wrong! My words tumbled out hot and heavy. The worst is now! Miss Graham is in huge trouble. Cecilia is missing. I finally had some good friends, and now I've ruined it, I told her. Have you? she asked. If there's one thing I know about you, she said, it's that you go to bat for what you believe in. The question is, are these friendships and your teacher's job worth fighting for? Emily, status, thoughtful. Dear Hope, Mom and I took a girl's trip up to North California over winter break. Dad's traveling. During all that drive time, I couldn't stop thinking about Ms. Graham. The next school board meeting is February 5th, four weeks away. We can't just sit here and do nothing. We've got to explain. We've got to do something to make people listen to us. But this problem is a big problem, a grown-up problem. Is there anything we can do about it? Out of the blue, an idea struck. We need to see Ms. Graham. She'll know how we can save her job. But I don't know where she lives, and it's not like I can ask her. Tomorrow's the first day back at school. Maybe I'll ask Sharon and Kai to help. I guess I could ask Aviva. She put a note in my box before winter break. So, maybe? We all got her into this mess. We need to get her out. Love and luck, Emily. Aviva. Date, January 8th. First day back. I have two words. Boring and sad. Even Kermit looks depressed. I suffered through the day, but after school, Emily pulled me aside and shared her idea. Then all of a sudden, I smelled Kaylee's strawberry shampoo from behind me, and she kept saying, what? What? And before I knew it, I was explaining to Kaylee, even though Emily kept elbowing me, and then it was like, oops, maybe I wasn't supposed to say that. Only then, Kaylee surprised both of us. I'll help, she said. I'm in, 100%. Kaylee, dear Ms. Graham, we're going to get your job back. I could tell Emily didn't really want my help at first, but she's not in charge of the world, is she? Plus, I've decided the Social Issues Project is officially back on. Our topic is still access to education, but I say we focus on our own education. If we want to learn anything this year, we've got to get you back to teach us. P.S. Most of us are still writing in our journals every day, even though you're not here to make us. I don't know about everyone else, but writing helps me think. Sharon, today I found Cecilia's friends on the far end of the playground. Where is Cecilia? I asked. One girl crossed her arms. They moved. I froze. They moved? With no warning? The girl looked at me like I'm stupid. Yes, your little field trip could have gotten her family in a whole lot of trouble. I must have seemed as confused as I felt because then she said, you don't get it. It took me about an hour, but then it hit me like a fist in the face, and I understood. No wonder Cecilia cried a river all over the backseat of that police car. After school, I found Kai by the bike rack to tell him Cecilia had moved, and I explained why. He just stood and scuffed his feet. I was all, listen, I messed up. You messed up. We messed up. We've got two choices. Do nothing or try to help. We may not be able to fix things for Cecilia or for Ms. Graham, but we owe it to them to try. Both Emily and I have ideas. You in? Henry, scene, far end of the field at recess, kids clustering together. Emily, what we're planning to do is against the rules. You could get in trouble. We all could. I wanna make sure everyone here is making this decision on their own. Sharon, Emily is right. No one should feel pressured. Only do this if you think it's the right thing to do. Kaylee, we're in. Come on, we've all been listening to Ms. Graham all year. All her, you get to choose the kind of person you want to be, and you can make a difference. Let's get this started. Blake, maybe we're all one team now. It's like our two table groups merged. Kai, minus Cecilia. Kids, quiet, thinking about Cecilia. Blake, right, minus Cecilia. But like Henry said, maybe we have to stop competing and just work together. 
Aviva. Except for the egg off, I don't think it was ever supposed to be a competition. Maybe we just made it one. Emily. Well, if we made it that way, then we can unmake it. The first step is we've got to find Miss Graham's address. Sharon. And we know Cecilia moved. But maybe if we go to her old place, they'll know where she is. So we'll search for her address, too. Henry. I hereby dub this adventure Operation Frog Effect, or OFE for short. Bell. Ring! Okay, if you're confused about why Cecilia had to move, they were illegal, or the mum came into the United States um, illegally, not going through all of the regular channels. So it meant that the police in the United States could arrest her and put her into detention and um, even put Cecilia into detention. We're going to have a book on the book of the year thing next. Oh, maybe I just read it for book of the year. We might have it on book of the year for next year um, about a kid that that happens to. Okay. And, and we know from watching the news that it's happened to um, hundreds, thousands of people just in the last few years. Kai. Hey there, frog. At first, I didn't want to talk to Sharon or go to the recess meeting. I wanted to stay sucked into my books and forget about the real world. Today, my team stole the Beyonders and Fablehaven books I had in my backpack and said they'd hold them hostage until I came to the meeting. Yes, I'm reading again. Halfway through winter break, when I was about to die from boredom, I picked up some old favorites, the ones with missing pages and torn covers. The stories pulled me in and I lay in my bed reading for days. I just wandered around in a book coma and didn't think about anything real. Mom and Dad gave me a talk about how we learn from our mistakes, and while they never, ever, ever want to get a call like that again, all I can do is learn and move on. I've got the book Wonder on my brain again, and it makes me want to get off my butt and be the kind of person that does something. Maybe that's what Ms. Graham meant when she said we get to choose the kind of person we want to be. We tried to look for Ms. Graham's address with an internet search, but it came up with way too many names. We decided the next step would be to try to find her address written down somewhere, in her desk or maybe in the front office. I looked up Cecilia's address on the internet too, but I realized I don't know her parents' first names. Jeez. Of course, now that we know, um, Cecilia's address will not be on the internet and she probably won't have any social media either. Kaylee's all about the drama, running around calling this Operation Frog Effect. She even told me she wore black today so she can sneak around without anyone seeing her. Uh, Kaylee, this is not a spy mission. We're just doing what's right. Plus, it's broad daylight. Get a grip. Sharon, here I am again, creeping like a criminal, trying to right a wrong, hoping that having my heart in the right place will somehow make a difference. Hiding in the classroom coat closet, waiting for just the right moment, when everyone is gone. Tiptoeing up to the teacher's desk, ruffling through stacks of paper and sliding open drawers. But... I cannot find a home address anywhere. Next step, the front office. But how will we search without getting caught? I'm so glad the sneaking around is Emily's idea this time. Plus, we're a team again, and that feels good. We can't fix everything, of course, but we can sure try. Henry. Scene. Aviva, Emily, and Henry have entered front office. Henry is not sure if he feels like a superhero or a criminal. Emily. To Miss Tildy, weekly. I think I might puke, Miss Tildy. How about you sit here in the nurse's office for a while? If you don't feel better by the time lunch is over, we'll call someone to pick you up. Opens the drawer with the emergency contact form and pulls Emily's contact info. Aviva and Henry, thank you for bringing her. Sharon and Blake push through the front office door. Sharon has an envelope in her hand. Sharon, Miss Tildy, we all signed a card for Miss Graham. Miss Tildy glances back toward the hallway where Principal Severin's office is located, then turns back with a softer voice. Would you like me to send it to her? Sharon, could you? Miss Tildy, yes, I'll make sure she gets it. Blake, thanks, Miss Tildy. Sharon and Blake leave the office. Miss Tildy types, scrolls, and begins addressing envelope. Kai walks into office and discreetly scoops a small frog out of his sweatshirt pocket and onto the office counter. Miss Tildy... I forgot my lunch. Can I call my mom? Kermit hops across desk counter. Miss Tildy leaps up. Ah! A frog! Kai, I'll get it. Do you have a bucket? I could trap it. Miss Tildy runs to get a bucket. Henry stands up and scoots over to the open document on the computer, takes photos of the address, then slips the phone back into his pocket. Emily flips through emergency contact forms and removes Cecilia's. 
Henry steps back and takes a photo of this form, then Emily slips it back in. Kai scoops up Frog with his hands. Got it! Blake. The Superhero 7. Make it Superhero 8! We're holding a space for you, Cecilia. Chapter 23. Cecilia. Hola, abuelita. Our new apartment is bigger because we decided to share a space with Prima Maria and her son, Josue. Mami and Maria put their money together so they were able to get a nicer place. There's never quiet, because Josue is always blasting his music, but I don't mind. I'd rather have family around. We're taking turns cooking, and I love the smell of the polvo de chile in our kitchen. Our neighbor has three small children, and she asked me to come over to play with them. I'd do it for free, but she offered to pay me. She calls me a babysitter in training. I'm going to save my money. I can't change the rules of immigration. Still, there are so many things I can do, mostly when I'm 18, but I can start preparing now. When I'm 18, I'll vote against anything that separates families, and I'll travel to visit you, Abuelita. I know it'll take a very long time to save up enough money for a trip, but I'll start now. Plus, someday I want to go to law school and fight for Mami's rights and for the rights of other families like ours, too. I miss my old friends from White Oak Elementary. Do the kids from my lunchtime soccer game notice I'm gone? I wonder if my B5 friends think of me as often as I think of them. Are Emily and Sharon still eating lunch together? And Kai, is he still reading underneath his desk? I miss Miss Graham too. I even miss Kermit. Maybe I'm already forgotten. They're not forgotten to me. Words to practice. I know I keep telling you this when we FaceTime, but your English is getting very good. I can tell you've been practicing. Forgotten. Olvidado. Neighbor. Vecina. Babysitter, niñera, apartment, apartamento, besos y abrazos, Cecilia. Aviva, date, January 13th. A bunch of us met up at Pitts Park and walked together to the address on Cecilia's emergency contact form. But Sharon was right. She'd moved, and the new family didn't know to where. Kai pulled his hoodie over his head, and I could tell he was feeling rotten. I think we were all discouraged, but we moved on to our next stop, Miss Graham's house. I worried we'd come to the wrong place because it looked like a grandma house. It had flowers and cracked gnomes that stuck out of the weedy grass. It did not look like a place where Miss Graham would live. Kai pressed the doorbell, but I hung back next to Kai and Sharon. An old lady answered the door, a golden retriever by her feet. My heart sank. We had stolen the wrong address. Can I help you? She asked. She matched the house perfectly. My voice stuck in my throat, but Sharon told her we were looking for Miss Graham. She smiled really big, then turned and hollered, B! Was she Miss Graham's mother? The grandma lady didn't look like Miss Graham at all. She looked like a marshmallow, but not in a bad way. Marshmallow skin, white and soft and puffy. Marshmallow legs, marshmallow arms, sugary smile. Miss Graham came to the door in sweatpants and a baggy t-shirt, but that's not how she dresses for school at all. Her eyes got super wide like she was surprised to see us. She just stood all smiley for a long time, standing there like she wasn't sure what to say. Henry. Scene. Seven fifth graders standing awkwardly at their teacher's door. At first, it's cringeworthy quiet, and then BAM! Everyone's talking all over each other. Aviva. We miss you, Miss Graham! Emily. Miss Graham, we are so sorry all this happened. We wish we could fix this. It's not your fault we went to that shelter. It's not fair that they're punishing you for what we did. Kaylee, dramatic. We have to save your job. Kai, what can we do to help? Henry, long pause. Henry wonders if Miss Graham even heard any of them. Blake awkwardly scuffs his feet. Miss Graham, hi guys. I really appreciate you all coming out here. I miss you too, but this isn't something I can talk to you about. Aviva, but what about everything you taught us? Isn't there anything, even something small, that we can do to help? Miss Graham, I'm sorry, you guys, and don't worry, I'm okay, but you probably shouldn't be here. This is between me and the school board now. Ms. Graham's mother puts her arm around her, and then she slowly eases the door shut. Kids, standing frozen like icicles for a ridiculously long time. Emily, what was that? Henry, yeah, I'd been banking on a frog effect pep talk. You know, like, you can do anything. You're the adults of tomorrow, and blah, blah, blah. They just don't make pep talks like they used to. Aviva. 
It's not fair. Why does the school board get to decide? They don't know Ms. Graham or us. Blake, it's too bad we aren't on the school board. Henry, well, why aren't we? Kaylee, duh, we're kids. They don't put students on the school board. Sharon, why not? Kaylee, they just don't. Aviva, maybe we should try to change that. Sharon, a thousand thoughts left unsaid, like cartoon word bubbles hanging in the air. We stood at Ms. Graham's door, waiting for someone to tell us what to do. We could have waited forever, because this time there are no directions, no road map, no recipe. It's up to us to figure this out. What I need to know is, what did she want to tell us? What did she want to say? And why did she hold back? Did we make it worse by tracking her down? And can we make it better? Kai, dear frog, on the walk home from Ms. Graham's, everyone started talking, saying maybe we could really try to get a seat on the school board. And if we did, maybe we could actually save Ms. Graham's job. That's great and I hope we can do it. But what about Cecilia? I'm beginning to think that we'll never find her. Maybe Sharon was wondering the same thing because she started saying that she didn't want this whole homeless shelter thing to be for nothing. That we caused all these problems for Miss Graham and for Cecilia and wasn't there something good that can come from it? Didn't we learn anything? And then I was being sarcastic and then I said, I learned my toes were about to freeze off. Sharon stopped walking right then and Henry bumped into her. Well, that's something. That's definitely something. Blake. Donations, warm socks for people in need. Kaylee, dear Ms. Graham, yesterday when we were at your house, I'll admit that I was confused. Couldn't you have invited us in or at least said something encouraging? I bet you feel awful about this whole thing. At least you're not all alone feeling sad. Your mother seemed really nice, and I can tell by the way she put her arm around you that you have a relaxed, comfortable kind of relationship. I'm guessing you don't want to get in more trouble or make things worse. But still, what about us? We need you. Here's the thing. If no one else is going to fix this, I guess I'll have to. I've watched my mother take on issues for years. Not to brag, but I know how to get things done. Plus, there should totally be a student on the school board. That's how we'll get your job back. Just watch me make this happen. Emily, status, little one half smile. Dear Hope, Kaylee's right. If the school board gets to make the decision about Ms. Graham, then the solution is simple. We need to get student seats on that board and we need to do it fast before they vote on Ms. Graham. I talked to my neighbor who's a retired principal. She said that first there will be an investigation and then the findings will be presented at a school board meeting. So there's two places we can make our voices heard. One, the investigation, and two, the school board. Where do we start? I've been listening to other table groups in class. Aviva keeps talking about Malala and the power of her pen, how she stood up for what she believed. I thought about Dad's job and how he uses his writing to make a difference. I thought back to the homeless shelter and how part of the reason I'd wanted to go was so I could write about it. Suddenly, I had this image of Harold's purple crayon and I wondered, is there any way to write our way out of this mess? None of the grown-ups are listening to what we say. But what about what we write? Maybe this is what Ms. Graham was saying. Maybe it's exactly the kind of small thing that can make a big difference. Love and luck, Emily. P.S. Even when Kaylee's just trying to be helpful in her regular Kaylee way, I sort of want to find reasons to hate her. I'm working on that. Kai. Dear Frog, I'd like to at least talk to Cecilia, but I'm not sure how. I wonder if any of her lunchtime friends know how to find her. Maybe I can write a note and ask one of them if they know where to deliver it. Dear Cecilia, we miss you at school. Do you want to meet at the library sometime? Here is my phone home number in case you ever want to call. 818-555-3833. My parents won't let me have social media yet, so phone is the best way. Or you can send me a note here at school. Kai. Sharon, something's brewing in room B5. We're cooking up a big pot of something from nothing. I read a book with that idea once, and it reminds me of a folktale where a hungry stranger convinces people to each add a bit of what they have, nearly nothing, to make a soup that will feed them all. Definitely something. Each of us is adding our own ingredients, stirring it with some good intentions, and breathing in the bubbling aroma of hope. All our nearly nothings might just make a whole lot of somethings, if we work together. <laughs>